April, how are you? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain. Yeah. It's a beautiful day here and, um, you know, had my coffee. <laughs> you have the same scene out your windows I have out mine. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's... um. I, I feel very lucky to live in a wooded area. I mean, yeah. it's a neighborhood, but our lot has a lot of like old oak trees and stuff like that. And so yeah. um, we built a patio out back. And so we spend a lot of time outside just hanging out in the backyard because it's, it's nice. It is. It's really nice. Where are you located at? We're in Virginia. Okay. Yeah. It's so beautiful. right outside of Richmond. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really, um, we lived in Arizona for three and a half years, um, yeah. before we had kids and when the kids were really little and it's gorgeous out there, but I missed all the green. And so yeah. I was like, I don't know now that I can surround myself with trees, I'm really happy. So. Yeah. Um, I was noticing this year cause we've been out here for about five years and this year, I guess is the first year I paid attention, but it's like the, uh, the green like starts on the bottom and like goes all the way to the tops of the trees slowly, you know, and then all of a sudden you look out and there's leaves everywhere. Uh, <laughs> right. right. Green. <laughs> and you're, are you in Arkansas? Yeah. I'm right. in Arkansas. Are you in Arkansas? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, North. where where were you before? We were in um, okay north, uh, mm -hmm. no, like North Texas, it kind of north of Dallas in Denton. Oh, yeah, yes. And I grew up in downtown Dallas. Oh, me. So it's a okay, thing. okay. <laughs> Yes. Yes. And I, when I was a child um, in the 80s, my parents and I lived in Houston, which I know uh -huh. is, it's a little bit different than Dallas. But um, but every time I think of Texas, I'm like, oh, yeah, my childhood. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's cool. It's really cool. So, so um, yeah, for the video, will you say your name and the, mid the type of long arm that you have? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, my name is Heather Stocker and I have a baby lock crown jewel three. And how do you like so, it? And I use like pro stitcher. I love it. I think it's really great. Um, there, you know, I think anytime you have a machine, you have have to learn its quirks. Yeah. You know? So, um, so once I learned the quirks of the machine, which took me about two weeks to get like tension just right and stuff like that. Um, and of course it took me longer cause I'd never, I'd never long armed before. So it took me longer to figure out how, <clears throat> excuse me, how to do, how to set things up optimally and how to um, work with the, the pro stitcher. But uh, once I got all that stuff down, it, it works like a gym. Now yeah. that I know all the tricks, you know? Yeah, yeah you know how to get so. it going. Every once in a while, she, yes. <laughs> and every once in a while, she throws a curveball at me, and I'm like, now what are you doing? You know, um, I can't think of what it was. There was something like a month ago. Um, I have pandemic brain, by the way. <laughs> by the way, but about a month ago, something happened, and I was like, I've never seen this. I've never heard of this before. And, um, Oh, gosh. And I had reached out and I had asked some people and I can't remember. It was a very simple solution, like, yeah. you know, changing needle or something like that, you yeah. know, and I was like, uh, I know this. <laughs> so, yeah. What kind of machine do you have? Um, I have a, over here. I have a Gamel Vision. It's a hand guided. That one's uh, 22 inches. And then this one is a, a Nova mm -hmm. and it has the computer with the Mach 3. And I'm, um, you know, I don't know if you've watched my stories, but I'm uh, like, I'm getting into trying to use the computer and the free motion all at the same time. You know, I guess best of both worlds. by Luke Yes. Taylor. And um, so today, um, I'm going right. to put that quilt over here and then do some computerized designs on it and then free motion. I had to raise mm -hmm. it yesterday about two inches because it was too short. 
Um, but okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a little tall, but you know, there's only you got one inch or two inch. So <laughs> I'm okay. Right. Yeah. 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 But, That's one thing, um, like I've been wanting to get into ruler work so that I could do exactly what you're talking about, like take some of those patterns that I already, maybe it's an E2E or maybe it's something else, but like to really be able to customize that quilt work yes. um, with ruler work because my free motion is, whew, I can't draw to save my life. <laughs> so, so um yeah, if you've got any hot tips on who I can go to to help me with my free motion, I would love that because I have tried and it's it's very challenging. You know who like who who I took a class on Craftsy long time ago and it mm -hmm. was through uh, Cindy Needham. It's her first class on there. It's called um, Design It, Quilt It, and she does okay. it. It's like sit down. You know, sit down, free motion, yeah. free motion. and um, and that's where I started. And she taught you how to do a feather. She said it would be like a swoop, you know, like yeah. a, like that. And so I was like, I I probably made a hundred of those, you know. I right. was just, like obsessed. My kids were so little, and I could just go in there real quick with a little quilt sandwich and go to town. And um, she, her, it's a long class, yeah, it's long, but it's very in depth. And it's worth every penny. I mean, yeah. she, and then the okay. other person, you know, is a, of course, Angela okay. Walters, but um, the main person that really got me motivated, yes. me in the right direction was Cindy Needham. She kind of describes it. Differently. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I have some, okay. I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. Something. I'll have to check her out. Yeah. Yeah. She is really cool. Yeah. Let me see. Have you heard of Carolina Asmussen? She did like she did like these circles, quilted circles. No. And then did like designs like birds with rays coming behind, but real small. Well, she's got this, this new ruler. Oh. Like she's. I'm gonna uh, look at that. It's like a oh. Ooh. Yeah. And then she sent me a panel to play with. So I'm going to do, you know, videos and stuff. And then the other ruler oh is this gosh. shape. So yeah. She, she also sent me. Nice. Yeah. And I bought the first ruler from her and it's, it has so many, sorry, it's all like everything's way over there and I'm short. Oh, this is her, the first one. <laughs> So you could do outside circle, inside circle, and then straight line, and the wave. And it has all the nice. diagonal. So like, nice. you, can, you know, if you okay. invest, get these lines, you know, where you can go do um, cross hatching. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that one's my favorite one right now. Right. Yes. <laughs> so you were talking about you wanted to. Talk yeah. About, uh, oh, that's cool. That yeah, is so cool. That. Um, you were wanting to talk about perfection and what did you say? How it, you know, like defeating. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more. Yeah. Perfection being the enemy of the good. And this is something that I think about a lot with myself because I am in no, even though I quilt professionally for other people and I build like custom quilts and stuff, there's still that little voice then. And I think it's in all of our heads, you know, yeah. um, that sits there and goes, maybe this isn't good enough, you know? Um, and I see it a lot on quilt forums and, and Facebook when quilters share their quilts and they go and they want to point out every single little thing that they've done wrong. And I'm looking at a picture of a very, very beautiful quilt. So my husband calls this um, allowing perfection to perfectionism to be the enemy of the good. And um, I think it is so spot on because I think as women, it, you know, of course you might have some males out there who are, who are quilters as, as well. But I think a lot of times women are so quick. We are so quick to criticize ourselves. We're criticizing our hair, our weight, our appearance, our work, our, you know, all these things. And I have seen some beautiful, beautiful quilt work 
that um, that the person who did the work didn't realize how outstanding their work was and how beautiful it was. And um, and so that's been that's been something that I practice with myself is like trying not to be perfect because really we can't be perfect. None of us can be perfect. Right. But um, we can be good at what we do and we can always strive to build that skill set. But perfection is something that is, you know, I think it's the Amish that say only God is perfect. Um, So, um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about because I feel like this is something that um, can hold us back. It can hold us back from taking the risks necessary to build the skill set it can hold us back from, you know, maybe what we want to do is we want to take our quilt to a show and and share it with other people. But it might, you know, be that little piece that's kind of like, oh, right. no, I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you struggled with that at all yourself? Oh, I just picked out that. <laughs> I just picked out like a, it took me three days to pick it. Out. It was not anywhere near good enough but I I know that I should have planned better you know Mm -hmm. you know you can always plan a little bit better yeah I I thought I could just take off and follow the lines and I and the thread color was wrong too but it it, it, you know you start to do you start to think oh gosh you know should I even be quilting (laughs) you know you start to really doubt yourself on on stuff (laughs) you know yeah so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I've had that too. I mean, it, th- this is not to say that you should, you know, especially if you're quilting for somebody else, that yeah. you just go, eh, this is good enough. <laughs> but it certainly is, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll sometimes I'll feel very insecure about what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. And there are times I I have this rule that in, and this is the way my brain works, that if I have to go ask my husband if it's good enough, then it's not good enough. Yeah. You know, like and then I'll go and I'll rip out that row or I'll rip out that section of quilting and I'll redo it. Um But if there's something that I'm like, I don't know if this is good, you know, and I can keep it to myself and it like the impulse is to keep it to myself, then it's probably good enough. You know, yeah. like it's probably me being really nitpicky about something. So, um, so yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I think it's just so universal. I do too. I do too. And um, if, if I make a mistake, like if it's a, um, you know, a custom quilt, I'll make a mistake on one spot. Uh, then I try to make the same mistake mm-hmm. over again, um, instead of having to rip it yes. out. Uh, it can't always be done, but yes, most of the time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, absolutely. And the, the other thing that strikes me too, is I had a customer recently, she brought me her first, her very first quilt and she wanted somebody to quilt it. And, um, she was apologizing because her seams didn't line up perfectly. And I think that there's two ways of looking at this. You can look at it and go, Oh my God, what have you done? (laughs) Or you could be like, Oh my gosh, what you've done. You know, she made, a beautiful quilt, you know, and yeah, you know, there are days when I sew and I can't get two seams to match up perfectly. And I've been sewing for 20 years, you know, like, and there are just days that are like that. And, um, and so, you know, I, I really would love to see quilters flip the narrative and just kind of say, you know, I'm not always going to hit, you know, I'm not always going to be batting a thousand, yeah. Um, but I'm doing good work and I'm doing valuable work and I'm, I'm making something beautiful. I'm making artwork, you know, yeah. I'm making something that my family use. And um, I think that that's such a valuable space to live in. Um, but to also have enough discomfort with what you're doing to allow yourself to grow and to increase your skill set is really important too. But I, I, I think, you know, we don't need to apologize for the work that we've done. And okay. I think that, uh, I don't know. I've never met a quilt I didn't like, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I just haven't. <laughs> yeah, I tried so, to tell my first stuff. quilt. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. Your first quilt. 
Oh, I was going to, yeah, my first quilt was, um, it's funny because it's so wonky. Like the corners aren't even like, I didn't have enough fabric to completely complete the corners. So I cut them off. <laughs> And I mean, and the, the quilting on it, like the intersections don't match up. The quilting's all messed up. I made that quilt like 20 years ago and I still have it. And it's one of my, I won't say that it's my favorite quilt, but it's the one that is the most deeply meaningful to me, you the know? So um, yeah. I think the first one. Yeah. Yeah. That's special. <laughs> what were you going to say? Um, I try to. It is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It doesn't always work, but I try to say to myself, I want to grow and become uh, better today than I was yesterday, which a lot of people say. And I, I try to make yep. that a thought that's in my head throughout the day. And it doesn't always get there, you know, but mm -hmm. it, it's because. You know, right. sometimes we yeah. get pulled down with the negative and we just need to try and pull up with the positive a little. Yes. Yeah. And it's it's kind of like a meditation or yoga. It's a practice and you have to keep coming back to it. Yeah. And some days you're just too tired. You just don't want to come to it. You know, like in, you, maybe today's my negative day and you can forgive yourself and no judgment. Let's move on from today, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, I think, you know, just easier said than done. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. So do you, so I was reading that you, um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, oh, <laughs> I was reading that you. <laughs> I'll let you go. You Nose go. goes. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading that you um, you started out as because you were a stay at home mom. Quilting was something that you could do, and I was going to say I think that's a a lot of experience for many of us because I did the same thing. I was staying home with two young kids and, you know, that was something that I could just kind of pull back and have my space yeah. and, you know, move out of kids space and into this is Heather's place to, to exist and to live. And it was such a, it was a reprieve of so, sorts. So I loved reading that about you when I um, was uh I read a little thing about you on Leah Day. I think it was Leah Day's website. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I know April, you know. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Did you see she's pregnant? No, I did not. Yeah, six months. She's having oh a little Oh, my gosh. Girl. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That is so cool. Um, yeah. Do you so do you you do quilt for a business, right? You do do that. Mm -hmm. I do. Are you on the long arm? Line? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, I I love like I love the long arm league. I like how like Jess has everything set up, and uh, I like um, I like the free pantographs definitely, but I saw all those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, saw all those coaching calls and when I got done with them because I'm on the lower lower one I was like I need more <laughs> you know so yeah. I, I like started this so I was like I need to talk to more people oh, that cool. are long armors so yes yes yeah that has been um and I have shamelessly been plugging the long arm league. Like when somebody on one of my Facebook long arm um, pages is like, I have this question uh, and it's usually a business question. Mm -hmm. And I go in and I say, Hey, you know, the long arm league is helping me with this. When I signed up for it, I really wanted to, to sign up and still take the rookie season, even though I wouldn't technically be a rookie because I'm largely self-taught and I, and I told Jess, I said, I just feel like there's probably some stuff in there that I don't know, or that I could really still find valuable. 
Yeah. And so she was like, sure, come on in. Um, and so I've been going through working through the rookie season and that has been super helpful, not just, you know, long arming, but like the business of long arming. And yeah. I've, she's um, set it up so well. I'm completely impressed. Another thing that's worth every penny, you know, um, and then that community, you know, the Slack channel and all that has been yeah. really good. So I've been shamelessly saying, hey, join the long arm league, join the long arm, you know, and and doing some free advertising for her because I find it so valuable. I know. I know. As, as when I was watching the videos or um, reading her post, it was so helpful to, like, keep me motivated. You know, like mm -hmm. keep me going, and um, it still yes. does. You know, and I and that mm -hmm. I think that's really important for us as long armers because we're so alone all the time. You know, and to be um, with other people that are just yeah. like us is so nice. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. And I think, too, I mean, we've been in a pandemic, so many of us have, you know, been in lockdown or we haven't been able to move and stretch ourselves in ways that we normally would. Um, I know I would be going to quilt shops a lot more than I do and, yeah. um, you know, hanging out with friends a lot more than I do. So it's been really good to have, you know, a community of sorts because I did I was on several uh, quilting pages on Facebook and then you know also the long arm league to, to be able to talk to people and to ask questions and say hey have you experienced this and to have a group of people who are so dedicated and committed to the craft is is pretty amazing oh yeah it's very nice um, so what do, what all do you do yeah. as your business? Like, do you just do um, computerized quilting or what's your like thing? And what's like really exciting for you? Like right now, what are you working on? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I do a lot of, um, I do mostly education. I, um, I make custom quilts for people. So that includes design assembly and long arming <laughs> like all the finishing services then i also have the long arming arm of my business and then um i sell a limited amount of fabrics um on my site what i want to do though is i want to shift more to long arm like almost like a service kind of thing uh -huh. as far as and i i mean uh -huh. yes i want to take in quilt tops and long arm them for people but also i want to think in terms of like how to shift my business toward helping long armors yeah um so yeah. you know if you need like wide back where could you go you could come to bonaire quilt company you know if you need batting by the roll where could you go if you don't have a wholesale account and i'll put that caveat on there because there are people who don't have a wholesale account and they are they aren't doing it for a business and that is absolutely kudos, you know, like that would be great <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, because, um, you know, I yeah. think quilting recreationally is still very important. I still find value in that. Yeah. So, um, so that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to think of how can I make pantos? How can I design pantos? I've got that pro stitcher design pro stitcher designer, thing and um yeah. you know and i'm thinking in terms of stuff like that you know how can how can i help support our community of long yeah. armors yeah. yeah i think that's wonderful i really like i, I like the I, idea of of helping other long armors and i've i've kind of had the same question in my head you know for a few years mm -hmm. i started a group on facebook um long arm quilters beginners to pros and then there's free motion quilters beginners to pros and they're both pretty good sized i'm in that group yeah, yeah. They're, they're really good groups um and mm -hmm. i try to keep the peace and all that stuff um but it's like it grew so fast mm -hmm. and um but at the same time you want to put stuff you you mm -hmm. want to help people but you also need to be like compensated kind of to, for your time, at least, you know, if anything, and it's trying yes. to find that yeah. happy medium, yeah. you know, 
where you don't feel like you're, you know, taking every penny, but you're also getting enough money to pay for your time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing that I was, um, um, I'll often, like, I often see us devaluing our own work. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. everybody likes to get a good deal. I'm no different. I love yeah. a good deal. But the reality of life yeah. is that we all need to kind of make our own way and we all need to be able to pay our bills and we all need to be able to do what we need to do in order to survive and feed our kids yeah. and you know all that kind of stuff. So um, so I. I often push back on that narrative that people can't do this as a living. I think that you absolutely can. Are you going to make $5 million? I don't know. You might be the lucky Missouri star quilt company. You might be, I don't know. Um, I'm not looking to make a million dollars. I am looking to be able to secure, you know, my future, the future with my children and, and to do that. Um, and I think that we should be as professionals and as quilters, we should be compensated fairly for that. Yeah. So I'll often be on the, like if somebody says, Oh, well, I could never make any money doing that. And I'm like, you, you don't know. You probably could, you know? Yeah. Just so. think about it. <laughs> yeah. You'll yeah. come up with something. Yeah. And absolutely. And you know, what was interesting and I think what, how, with the long arm league, what really reeled me in with Jess was she said something, and this has been my philosophy of quilting for years. I came out of education. I used to teach. And so my philosophy is there's room at the table for everybody. And Jess said something very similar to that. And I was like, this is my tribe. You know, these are my people because I very much feel that way. I don't feel like if my neighbor is long arming, I there's no skin off my nose to send. If I'm too busy to send one of my clients over to my neighbor, you know, and, um, and I'm very fortunate because I do work with, I know the owner of a local quilt shop and she sends me business and I send her business and she's got a long arm. She's running two long arms in her shop, you know? So we could be competition, but we don't need to be competition. So, so yeah. We have here a um, long arm guild. So there's probably uh-huh. 10 to 15 uh, long armers that come to the meetings. And um, oh. and it's it's just long armers talking long arm, like in a guild type style. So it's nice. nice. It's nice to, and, and it takes the competition out of it. It, it becomes mm-hmm. instead of you're my competition, you can help me, you know, or I can help you. Right. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if we have anything. I haven't seen anything like that in the Richmond area. Oh, Or else I would be on that. You can do it yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's really not that hard. Um, I'm the president because the lady that was the creator of the group uh, Uh just didn't want to, she didn't want to do it. And she'd done it for like five years. She didn't want to do it anymore. Okay. But it's hard to get people to really want to volunteer and do extra stuff like any guild kind of. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. it's not that hard to find a location you just a church or something that's accepting people right now Mm -hmm. and get some send out some messages or at your guilds whenever they start to meet up you know to get a a little card or paper and say give me a call we're thinking about meeting up or something you know so every yeah i think yeah i think the long arm guilds should be everywhere so people can just yes you know like the modern quilt guild, but the longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think so many of us are working in isolation, as you mentioned earlier, and sometimes we're reinventing the wheel when we don't need to be. And, um, and that that's one of the reasons why I joined quilt communities is because I might have something that I can tell you that would help you not to reinvent the wheel might save you some tears might yeah. save you some coin and it might save you some money you know yeah. so um those those were all 
tears, time, and money, I've wasted all three on something, you know? So, like, if I can prevent that for you, great. And yeah. then I've done my job. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this has been wonderful. Yeah. Do you have Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Oh gosh! Well, just what I um, I jotted it down because pandemic brain, as I mentioned. Yeah, I think I hit all this stuff that I wanted to to chat about. But I really appreciate you um, letting me come on here and bend your ear a little bit, April. Oh my gosh! I. I really like doing this. I love talking. Like, it makes my day. Yeah, I do one interview a day and it just yeah. makes my day. And um, I told my, I had one lady post the nicest comment about me on Facebook. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's like yeah. I'm building this yeah. whole uh, community, you know, of close knit people. Mm -hmm. um, and then once people get to watch your interviews, then they become they feel closer to you, you know, yes. and vice versa. But I have a Facebook group called Yeah, Commerce. yeah, and it's really neat to. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and it, the Facebook group is called Conversations with uh, Long Arm Quilters, Beginners to Pros, and I'm going to put you okay. on there, and that's where all of Great. the uh, videos will be. And then um, I'm going to put them all on Patreon for six months and see if I can mm -hmm. get a little bit of money coming in, just $5 yeah. per, per month. And it's like two videos uh, <laughs> per week. And mm -hmm. um, and then after six months, I'm going to probably put them all on YouTube just for everyone to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I flirted with Patreon a couple times and um, and I just have never because I do so much custom work uh -huh. and I'm trying to make sure my fabric stuff is together. And I'm like, I can't keep all those, you know, juggling all these balls and keeping them all in the air. So um, so I had to lay that down. So I'm glad you're exploring that. I think that's a great, op you know, option and opportunity. But my husband, he's like, try Patreon. And I'm like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah, like, try absolutely. it. I'm like, okay. um, but I don't know. If I'm you know amazed that. because. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm amazed because um, I know like my children, they're, they're huge into gaming and um, that's how people make money, you know? So um, people will subscribe and then they, you know, like donate, five dollars here or ten dollars here and yeah it's all over the place yeah i mm -hmm. think it's nice i think it's real nice yeah um, i was thinking yeah. about i've been um you know i've been playing with the zoom because i'm i'm new to it as this doing this anyways mm -hmm. there's a part on here where you can draw on a whiteboard and the board comes up on the screen and a little picture of you and i was thinking about doing yeah classes, like drawing classes like swirls mm -hmm. or feathers or something and putting and doing yeah. that, you know, just to play around. Yeah. That's a great idea. So yeah. I think that's, around. that's perfect because people, if you can help me to learn how to draw. <laughs> I will love you forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it to you first. <laughs> you give me a feedback. Please, please do. And if you want to test it out on me, yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. Yeah. <laughs> That'd well, be I'll, awesome. I'll let you go. I'll be your and, guinea pig. Yeah, please do. It, I'll yeah. let you go and, and get on with your day. And it was nice to talk to you. It's good to talk with you, April. You have a lovely day. And um, hopefully we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. You too. Bye-bye. Absolutely. Thanks. Bye.